What's up, everybody? It's Max from MJC Sports. I'm back with another solo video. This time, we're going to grade the rookies. We're going to use a tier list. We're going to grade all the rookies. And guys, it's six weeks of the NFL season. Don't overreact to the grades. They're going to change by the time of the end of the year if we do this again. And this isn't to say your team picked the bust or the player sucks or the player's the next coming of Patrick Mahomes. No, it's six weeks, how they've played. You're not going to hear a lot of stats. You're not going to see an F rank or an F grade, excuse me, just because it's only been six weeks. It'd be pretty hard to say, oh, it's been an F pick. It'd have to be a really special pick. What you will see is an INC for incomplete guys who haven't really played much, been injured in a position where they don't play. You're going to see some guys honorable mention. We're going to hit those two first. Then we're going to work our way down from one to 32 with a couple other guys sprinkled in there. So before we get into it, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, comment down below what you think. Am I totally off on your guy? Hey, maybe you think Caleb Williams is an F for some stupid reason because you're a bear hater. I don't know. You're a UCLA guy. Let me know down below. We're going to get into it. Let's go ahead and start with the INC. Got the notebook right here. I'll show you guys right before. Got the notebook, got all my notes. So let's get into it, guys. So as you can see, INC consists of Michael Penix, JJ McCarthy, Troy Fontenu, and Jordan Morgan. Look, the two quarterbacks, McCarthy's hurt. Penix is the backup, hasn't played at all. The two linemen, one's a swing tackle. Uh, Morgan's a swing tackle, hasn't really played much, been banged up. And Troy Fontenu looked pretty good after one week, played a little bit of week two. He's on IR with a shoulder injury. He's going to be gone a while or might not be back at all. So jury's out on them. Haven't played. Need to see more. The honorable mentions, we have Zach Frazier, Jalen Wright, Bucky Irving, Braylon Allen. Frazier's been a really good guard. Really freaking good for Pittsburgh. Almost made it onto the list. Just want to see a little bit more. He's played all the games. Really love what I've seen. Jalen Wright, my number one running back. Like what I've seen from him. Hasn't got a lot of carries with a chain, Mostert, but... He's going to fit in great in Miami. Just leave it at that. He's fast. Duh, of course. Bucky Irving. Watch out, Rashad White. He's coming for your job. Bucky Irving has been really good out of Oregon. And then Braylon Allen, the NFL's youngest player. He's powerful. He's athletic. He's got better hands than I thought. He has a role on the Jets offense, which is pretty impressive considering Brees Hall supposed to be the bell cow. Really impressed with Braylon Allen. Guy I liked coming out of college. So... Now, guys, we're going to get in to the people we're really here for. And starting off, Caleb Williams, one of the most highly touted number one picks. He's going an A minus. You might think, why? Last two weeks, he's been A plus. But the Bears and him looked kind of out of sorts the first four weeks. They had the meeting with Shane Waldron where we got to be more aggressive. We got to call these plays. And I know Keenan Allen was hurt and the O line's a disaster. But they figured something out in the last two weeks. He went all the way up to A minus. And I've really liked Caleb Williams. He's lived up to the hype. He's shown flashes and now he's putting it all together. The unfortunate part is the guy who picked right after him is having just one of the best rookie years of all time. Oh, sorry. Drake May. Jaden Daniels going all the way in A+. Plus. There's really not much to be said. Go watch our podcast. We've talked about this guy pretty much every week after week one. He is a stud. He is a game changer. He might save the Washington Commander football team franchise. Drake May got his first real game time this week. I start him. I usually start guys off in C, but I saw some stuff I liked. I also saw some stuff I didn't like. He's going in C+. The mechanics are wonky, not clean at all. Decision making is eh. He's playing behind a battle line, but I did see the ability to make some big throws, and he's like, like he's just competitive. I liked what I saw from Jake Drake May. So I think this is going to be the one I get a lot of hate for. Marvin Harrison Jr. He's going in B, and I've honestly been a little underwhelmed with what I've seen from him. It's not it's not saying he sucks, but look, you take away that Rams first quarter where he went ballistic, four catches like 138 yards, something like that, two touchdowns. It's been quiet. Doesn't get open as much. Doesn't create the separation I'm used to seeing. Like, he's going to be a really good player. There's no doubt about it. I'm just saying. He's been off to a little bit of a slow start. And again, it kind of is the same thing with Caleb. The receiver picked two picks later. Malik Neighbors. His A+. He has come out and been the true X alpha game changer for the Giants offense. Look, their offense isn't great by any means. 
but he makes them look good at times. And it's been kind of it's kind of been a struggle without him. Don't love the off the field stuff. Don't love going to the strip club, flashing a bunch of money. You know, when you're in concussion protocol, not a big fan of that stuff. But I do love the player. And realistically, he maybe should have been number one on my pick on my wide receiver list. Not ready to punt yet on Marvin, but slow start. The first offensive tackle, Joe Alt, he's going to go and be. He's been really solid for the Chargers. And he had a rough week against TJ Watt, but it's TJ Watt. You're a rookie. You're going to have these moments where guys were, were all famers are going to just destroy you. <coughs> Excuse me. And he was banged up. So I'm going to give Joe Alt B. JC Latham, the next tackle. This guy, where do I have him? I'm going to have him in C+. There's been flashes of being an excellent tackle, and there's been the rough, like the rough stuff. And J.C. Latham's been the most powerful, strong, athletic guy at probably every offensive line he's ever been in. And the adjustment to the NFL, he struggled with speed. Week one was a, like Darrell Taylor, who's not a great rusher, was just running by him because he's so much faster and quick. And Latham's going to have to adjust, but I like what I've seen. Definitely have a guy who's going to be a good tackle. The question is how good. Uh, we have Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze is going to go and be as well. Slow start with the Bears offense. Again, you know, Keenan Allen was banged up. He was banged up playing through injury. But I've liked how he's played the last few weeks. Kind of their whole offense has played. So I'm going to give Roma Dunze a B minus. <sighs> Olu Fashanu. Part of me wants to put him in the incomplete because he hasn't played a lot. But when I did see him, it was raw. And it was, I think, two games. <sighs> I'm going to go C minus, guys. He he should really be playing. It's an 11th pick of the draft. This O-line sucks. Morgan Moses should not be better than him at this point in his career. Like, he should be starting. Like, think about Tristan Wirfs. He got picked, plugged, all pro. Game changer for tackle for the Bear, uh, for the Bucks. excuse me. That's why he's kind of going to see minus. Like you should be playing. You're an 11th pick in the draft. You're not. You're not really parked to be benched. You know, it's not a quarterback. Like you're supposed to be playing. That's kind of scares me. Uh, next we have Bo Nix. I'll put him in B minus, guys. He's been good. Not great. Hasn't been bad. Had one bad week, but overall, like I think he's been good. But there's just no dynamic plays yet. And I know the offense doesn't lend itself, so that's something to keep an eye forward. But feel good Broncos like this is your quarterback he's going to be the quarterback for the future for sure he's going to be good don't know how good but he'll always kind of give you that baseline like oh we'll win like seven games with him you know what I mean like kind of like Derek Carr like you might want a little bit more it's not fair to compare him to Derek Carr yet but I like I like what I've seen from Bo Nix uh, next Brock Bowers <sighs> A plus you might say well he doesn't really lit the world on fire he's a tight end dude go look out many rookie tight ends have made a huge impact not many. Dalton Kincaid was quiet. Kyle Pitts had a thousand yards, the best season of his career, and kind of has been fading, kind of resurgence. But Brock Bowers has stepped on the field and made plays from week one. The Raiders suck. They're not going to be able to get him the ball when he's open. They'll miss him a bunch. And think about Devontae Adams drama not playing. Jacoby Myers banged up. Dude, Brock Bowers has been awesome. Like, truly awesome. Another guy who's been really good. Uh, Talise Fuanga, B, left tackle. Didn't really think he'd play tackle in football, but the Saints are kind of dire on the offensive line. He's been good. He's brought consistency to the position. He's one of the reasons why they got off to a fast start. I know they tapered off, but I've liked what I've seen from him. Really. Still think he's a guard moving forward, but I love what I've seen from Talisa Wonga. Uh, next, we have a Marius Mims. Did not play a ton. So only played two or three games. Go on and see. <coughs> Excuse me again, guys. But... Look, I've seen flashes with him of really good, and I've seen flashes of bad. And I think for a guy who's only played 10 games, like it's good that Trent Brown got hurt only in the like aspect of now he gets to play and throw him into the fire and let him learn because he needs to play. It's not like you need to learn. You've only played 11 games to tackle. You need to play. And when I've seen him play, there's been moments, like I said, of good. And then there's stuff where it's like he struggles with speed like Latham and he struggles with guys going inside, like feigning out going in because he's always worried about that speed. But there are a lot of pros like mammoth of a man, good run blocker, gets his hands on you. It's done. So moving on from Amarius Mims, uh, we have Brian Thomas. He's going in A. Dude, he's the best receiver in Jacksonville. He was the best receiver after two weeks. They need to get him more involved. They need to get him the ball when he's open and not overthrown Trevor Lawrence. How many yards has he left on the table? 
but like come on this guy is dynamic he's athletic he's a game changer for their receiver and like they're the one he's the one they've needed like i know they had like uh, they gave davis say jones um uh, uh, uh christian kirk this guy's dynamic he's a touchdown waiting to happen and that's what they desperately needed in jacksonville uh moving on graham barton gonna give him b plus he's done nothing horrible he's been a like he looks like Jaden Daniels kind of like he's just poised like he was born to play center he's been really good for the Bucks help the O-line protect Baker get the run game going great pick by the Bucks got another guy who's gonna get me killed probably Xavier Worthy going to be minus guys he's a gadget player who can run really fast when he's straight when he runs straight and yeah he brings some of the Chiefs offense but this guy hasn't set the league on fire he hasn't just been a game changer for their offense their offense still kind of sucks and they're still figuring it out, but he's been good in gadget plays like the re- reverses, get him a ball or a screen, and when and once in a while just let him just burn everybody, and Patrick Mahomes will throw a dime. That's all he's really good for right now. He's not doesn't have an extensive route tree, but hey, he's kind of been what I thought he'd be in through six weeks, and we kind of had him ranked where we did for a reason, and he's kind of showing us why. But there's still a silver lining. Like again, his speed kills. It really does. Uh, next we have. Tyler Guyton. It's been rough, really bad. Uh, this is not again to say he's going to be a bust and to say he'll never be a good tackle. But right now, it's penalties. It's losing the speed. It's losing the power. It's losing to counter moves. I don't really see anything he does great. I don't even love him as a run blocker. So Cowboys, this was a rough pick through six weeks, and I don't know if it's going to get better. It obviously can. I could be totally wrong, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, sorry. Ricky Pearsall should have been an incomplete. Forgot to add him in there. He got shot. Hasn't played it down. Prayers he heals because that's scary. Uh, Xavier Leggett going to C+. He's looked better with Andy Dalton, but they're such a mess. And the offense is horrible. And the quarterback, like Bryce Young, couldn't get him the ball. So I want to see a little bit more. I want to see him get the ball in space and look like that guy who was so physical, so gifted. I just haven't seen a lot of that, but I've seen some good from him. I've been seeing, I've been seeing him get better. So we're going to have to wait for a big game from Xavier Leggett. Now, we just have two receivers. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of guys we didn't include because this video would be like a thousand minutes long. We have Keon Coleman and we have Lad McConkey. Keon Coleman, C+. Same thing, kind of got off to a slow start. He's working himself into the offense. But for a guy I thought who had a very a very good skill set that would translate by being big, catching a lot of contested balls. I haven't seen him do that. Uh, That's not to say, again, he won't turn it around. He's been getting better every week, had a big touchdown against the Texans, but as right now, kind of, kind of underwhelmed by Keon Coleman. Lastly, Lad McConkey going right here in B minus. He's a good slot receiver. He's a jitterbug. He's fast. He's a good route runner, gets open, tough hands, made some circus catches for them. He's not going to do a lot statistically because they don't, they don't want to throw the ball. They want to run the ball. But when they do throw, he's been their best receiver by far. And that is the list, guys. Uh, it sucks that we have five first-round picks and incomplete uh, for a lot of injury and obviously a gunshot, which just is scary in general. But we have a lot of guys at A. We have a good amount of guys in B. Not too many bad picks. Like, I know Tyler Guyton. Again, he's not a bad pick yet. But not too many guys playing horrible. And again, it's offensive linemen. Those guys always take time to develop. It's very rare to see a guy like Tristan Wirfs come in and just dominate. Ryan Ramschek. So, if you guys like what you saw, leave a like. Tell me what you thought. Please, let me know. If I'm off and tell me I need to go back and watch, I definitely will, guys. Again, thanks for the support in the channel. I'm Max. Thanks for watching. Peace.